check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. So Kaggle and GitHub are the two main ways that you can showcase your work as a data scientist or as an aspiring data scientist. You also constantly hear me blabbering on about how valuable each of these platforms are. In this video, I'll compare the two platforms to determine which is the best place for you to host your data science portfolio. Before I compare the platforms, I'll give you a brief overview of what GitHub and Kaggle are. Let's start with Kaggle. So Kaggle is arguably the largest data science community out there. It started as a place where people could go to compete against each other in data science competition, and it still has these competitions, but now it's evolved into a one-stop shop for data science learning, awesome data sets, and an engaged forum. On Kaggle, you have a profile where you can earn rankings for sharing your work and placing well in the competitions. GitHub, on the other hand, is a bit more focused on function than learning. GitHub is one of the hosting platforms for the versioning control system, Git. Git allows you and your team to keep track of the changes in your code. This can be extremely valuable when you have multiple people working on the project. GitHub has also evolved into a place where you can keep and maintain code that you can write. Many developers use their GitHub profile and repositories as living documentation for all that they've done in their career and in their own personal time coding-wise. While these platforms serve different purposes, they can each be used as effective portfolios for data scientists. Now, what are some of the strengths and drawbacks of each? Let's start again with Kaggle. There are a few things that I think really make Kaggle great. First, there's a simple reward system that gives you medals for contributing to the community and placing well in competitions. Someone who's trying to assess your qualifications for a new role has immediate social proof that your work is adding value to other people. From there, they can click into your most popular notebooks to see what work that you're doing is garnering so much attention. Next, I find that Kaggle has a great community. Depending on your role, mentorship and communication could be a huge part of the hiring process. Seeing how you interact in discussions and convey information is very valuable. There are plenty of other great things about Kaggle in regards to the portfolio, but the last I'd like to touch on is related to discoverability. If you make a great Kaggle workbook, it's likely that you'll be upvoted. If you get upvoted, you can earn medals, but also can catch the eyes of other data scientists and managers. For the most part, there is a good amount of organic search potential for those looking for jobs on the Kaggle platform. All right, now let's talk about some of the drawbacks. First, you're limited in the ways that you can show your code. You're mostly going to be using a Jupyter Notebook format, which isn't always how code is published in production. Second, you're limited to the types of skills that you can showcase. Kaggle mostly has data that's readily available to you, and data collection and production skills aren't going to be as easy to highlight. Finally, the amount that you can share your code and your ability to make it useful to others is also a bit limited. You can share your notebooks, but outsiders can't easily import your work outside of Kaggle's specific environment. Now let's move on to GitHub. First, having a portfolio on GitHub shows that you know how to use Git. Git's a very important skill to learn for working with teams. I have an intro video related to Git in the top right of the screen, as well in the description below if you want to learn more. Next, if you have a strong GitHub portfolio, employers better understand how you document your code. This is really important, again, when you're working with teams. Most code documentation is actually done on GitHub, so this is a bit similar to my previous point. Related to this, you can also contribute to open source projects, which is another nice feather to have in your cap. Having your portfolio on GitHub also allows you to showcase a more diverse skill set. Can you program in other languages? Can you scrape data? Can you build an awesome front end for your project? You can include all of these in your GitHub portfolio. Very difficult to do in Kaggle. What are some of the drawbacks of GitHub? For some people, GitHub just isn't as easy to use. It doesn't aggregate things as nicely as Kaggle, and to use strong documentation, you might have to learn some markdown or do a lot of research. I find that Git can also be messy. It's time consuming to document your code, to organize your repositories, to build a readme, although it is definitely worth it. The last point is that it's hard to get found on GitHub unless you've built a truly great project or you've built a module that's extremely useful to other people. Now I bet you're wondering, which is better? For better or for worse, the answer is that it depends. I know, I know, I hate it when videos don't give a firm answer to. 
You can take your frustration out on the like button or the subscribe button if you really want to. If you want me to get more specific, I will. Kaggle and GitHub showcase slightly different skills. Depending on the role you're looking for, it could be better to have one or the other. If you're looking for a role as a data analyst or a data scientist, I think Kaggle is a really great place to start. On the other hand, if you have strong programming skills and are looking for machine learning engineering or data engineering role, it might make sense to favor the GitHub portfolio. In all honesty, my best advice is to have both. With very little effort, you can take what you did on Kaggle and put it onto GitHub. You can get the benefits of discoverability on Kaggle and the ability to showcase your entire skill set with GitHub's flexibility. Whatever you choose, having any portfolio is better than not having one at all. Uh, no, Kenneth. Actually, you should have a portfolio website. Well, Tina does raise a good point. You might want to check out some of our other videos on portfolio building linked below. Now, thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.